Business over drinks. Business over drinks. This is Dave and Tom. This is business over drinks. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Business Over Drinks. My name is Tang and I'm calling in from Singapore. And my name is David calling in from Brisbane and we have a very special guest tonight. And I'm really relieved to have him on because we've had some guests we like when we started this podcast, Tony and I would just invite our friends and buddies. But then as the podcast grew, we started getting people we've never met in our lives. Always makes us nervous a little bit. So it's good to have a great friend, great successful friend back on the show. And his name is Sydney Cachuela. So Sydney Cachuela is an entrepreneur focused on building the world's most customer centric cloud accounting firm, Pop Business. Their vision is to become the Apple and Amazon of accounting. The mission is helping business owners build their dream businesses. Apart from business, Sid has a keen interest in philosophy and thought leadership and has considered values and skills that he believes are essential in building successful and fulfilling life in this crazy, fast-paced, ever-changing world. And he's 32 years old, and I'm very jealous of his success and accomplishments. I feel like a small ant. Thank you, Sydney. Welcome to the show. Uh, pleasure to, to be joined by you guys again, and um, thanks for having me second time round. I'm glad I passed the uh, the obstacle of not being cancelled. So far, so far. so far. Yeah, this is the so second round. Let's let's try and get you cancelled. Let's try and get you cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Say but something yeah, no, about. Good, good to see you guys. Say, say something very not. No, okay, well, I won't make you do it. No, Maybe no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> No, but Sydney, I mean, I think it's great that you're you're back on the podcast, man. I think after what we discussed and the fact that I know a lot of people listen to the podcast as well. So that was really cool. Um, I mean, yeah, maybe how we can start this is let's keep it open ended. Let's just have a really fun one. I think that's a good that's a good thing. But also maybe find out uh, like how you guys have maybe you can tell us a little bit about how pop uh, business and uh, pop tax has grown over the last, uh, I think, almost 12 months, actually. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, t- today didn't really come with much of an agenda. Just wanted to have a good chat with you guys and 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 talk about what you guys are seeing in this uh, in the world, um, where you think the the state of the world is going as well. But um, and and talk about some skills that sort of helped me in my pathway as an entrepreneur. Um, suffered some pretty low lows and um, you know some high highs. So want to go through a bit of you know, the journey as well, bit of the story. Like I consider this part of the story for a long, long journey. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe we'll talk, catch up every once in a while just to get an update on how things are tracking. But yeah, pop business, uh, the last 12 months have been pretty pretty good for us through COVID. Um, an unfor- unfortunate circumstance, of course. Um, and a lot of people, it's interesting to see how people coped with COVID-19. Um, a lot of people went into, you know, finding extra streams of income, creating new businesses. So we did see like an explosion in the e-commerce section. Um, people were trying to expand, um, you know, a lot of Australian businesses were opened up from the US um, and Singapore, which is interesting because um, they you're just welcome. saw you're it welcome. as... You're welcome. That's, that's yeah, awesome yeah. Nice. Welcome. Thanks for representing. <laughs> yeah, it's good. You, you've got a, a e-commerce store, right? Well, what does it sell? Oh no, I don't. I, uh, we don't have an e-commerce store. I wanted to open an e-commerce store the last time. Last time I think I spoke to you, but um, I gave up on that idea when I realized it was a lot of hard work. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was. I thought you were selling that. Uh, that you know, those um, those goods and services. Um, but, yeah, I think, I think. <laughs> oh yeah, no. So yeah, we 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 sold. We sold. Um, it wasn't really e-commerce. We 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 switched to digital selling and digital. Lead gener- uh, on inbound lead generation primarily versus outbound because yeah it, 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 we we basically had to pivot 100% uh, almost 100% through uh, covid-19 yeah that's that, that's right like pivoting i think yeah. that's like those those companies that have adapted and changed the tax because mm-hmm. you know the, the way the world worked just suddenly changed um, so I think pop business was there at the right time, at the right moment, at the right time, and um, you know a lot of people needed advice to keep the, the lights on, keep the business moving forward. Um, but at the end of the day, you know it's always about keeping the customer happy. Like you know, people still need haircuts, 
people still need to buy groceries. So if you know you can keep things going on um, and keep people happy, I think that was a key to success as well. So in um, your in your business, Pop Tax, how do you keep people happy? Like, well, what are some things that kind of kept them coming back or keep yourselves growing? That's that's a good point. Um, one thing that took me 2020 to understand was to listen more. So listening is is like I don't know, must have been a narcissist or something. You know, sometimes you just think there's a certain way, and like you'll just do everything and anything you can to keep it the way you originally envisioned it. But you know, when you're met with resistance and um, and um, you know disagreements, you got to think, all right, is it me or is it is it the reality? Um, and I think sometimes you're just gonna be humble enough to be like, okay, you know, there's enough of a pattern here. You know, let's let's listen more, see what the feedback is. And I think that's what we've applied to the business in listening to our customers. It's like really what's going on in their business, um, what pains them about tax and accounting. Is it dealing with us? Is it dealing with an accountant? So if it is, if it's not just the price and the quality and it's the, the people that we're working with, perhaps it's a way that we can change the service and the way we deliver mm -hmm. it. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm super proud of how we deliver customer service in our business. I think it's definitely market leading and we just want to keep that going. And, you know, that, that value is, is taken from Amazon. You know, the customer centricity about that business has led it to become a behemoth in, in my, my opinion. So Sydney, I've got a question, right? Because we were discussing this before we started uh, recording. And one thing you told me is you've been like consuming a ton of content, right? Just trying to learn how things are going, like uh, learn from other people. If you had, if you could, if you had to, right? What would, what business would you have started if the, if there's another pandemic, if there's another situation like this, where everything kind of just, you know, everything goes to hell, right? What would be your side hustle? What would be your thing that you just, if you had to start from uh, scratch, what would it be? Um, well, first, firstly, I want to take pop business to a, a billion dollars first before I start from scratch. <laughs> I, can, I, honestly, can I have some shares in your company before? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're doing some capital raising boys. Let's, you know, if you're keen, I'll, um, I'll send through some documents. Um, uh, we, but, see, but, we see, we uh, see, we see, uh, uh, you're going to do private, uh, you're going to do like uh, friends and family. hundred percent. You guys are friends and family, <laughs> you, you know, you're in, you're Discount. in. Yeah. But if, if I had to start in a completely different field, it'd have to be education. Mm -hmm. um, super passionate on education because, you know, as, as a second generation Aussie, um, you know, mom came over from the Philippines and, you know, she was ducks in, in her university in the Philippines, University of Philippines, which was like the lead, the leading university at the time. And she came like in the sixties. So like, think about it, you know, anyone that's migrated during that time period is, yeah. is pretty much pioneering. You know, they're one of the first ones to come into a new country and, yeah. and really give it a go. So, um, you know, I've, super proud of what she's done and um you know one thing that she's always said is education is 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 like you know invaluable um and i think education is is one of the keys to make sure that you you, you get something you get out of life what you want um and i just don't mean the the, the traditional education system I'm not talk, talking about learning math and English, you know, the, the stuff that we, we thought was a chore when we were younger, but, but like skills that are, are like so valuable today, like mm -hmm. soft skills, uh, management, time management, um, negotiation, persuasion. Um, no one really teaches you this stuff back in, mm. in high school. No one teaches th you this in university like these are learnt through talking with you guys mm -hmm. you know talking with your friends family um and i think there's a big gap there because when i left university when i finished university and went into 
to work I didn't feel like I was I was capable I felt like a you know pretty pretty under like a subpar employee <laughs> to be honest um so I think there's a big opportunity there to mm -hmm. create a new like educational modality where you're teaching these skills on top of on top of the normal um, curriculum because that, if you think about it subjects like math and and engineering and science they're all tools yeah um, but they're not they're not um, cohesive skills they don't bring things they can bring things together but uh, I'm just hopping on on like other skills that are not really I, I mean they don't they know, don't bring they don't bring things to you personally but they're part they're bigger tools I think in in what you would call like uh, an industry or a job right but the soft skills you were talking about I think are more important for personal your personal achievement personal improvement growth and stuff like that I'm, I mean um, anecdotally right so this has happened quite recently uh, I don't want I don't want to call anybody out in in, in my team but uh, I had to have a real serious conversation with them about actually acknowledging people like people over email clients anyone that they're talking to I realized that they just ignore emails all the time they'll get the stuff done but like they won't just tell anyone I'm like guys you have to just it's an email it'll take you 10 seconds press reply say thanks got it just just do it but like they, they never thought that they're just like why I don't do that I don't do that my friends I'm like mm. they're not your friends these guys are, <laughs> these guys are paying me and I pay you you know it's it's really important there's like a there's a very important gap there but it, you're yeah. right they, people don't seem to understand that and I that comes from experience though because um, yeah, I mean, the newer generation is all is is all about. I mean, I'll, I'll talk specifically about newer generation. I just feel like they haven't experienced uh, the similar hardships that uh, the previous generations did. They're facing different hardships. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that they're soft, but we face different things. Like you know, we had to come up, if from a technology standpoint, with with shit. Right? It was basically terrible. That got really better really fast. These guys didn't, mm. they didn't know what a B-side was. We were talking about B-sides and they were like, isn't that like, you know, the behind the scenes where people like make mistakes? I'm like, that's not a beast. I, I got really depressed. I, I left the room for a minute because I couldn't, uh. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, man. Who, who doesn't I don't know what, what a B-side is. But, <laughs> Dave, why, come on, why, man. Why, please why, oh, Dave, I'm going to check out. Dave, I'm going to, I'm going to. What, what's everyone fly? drinking before, before oh, shit, we forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's everyone drinking? Uh, I've got uh, a fat yak. I, I promised you that I'd be drinking um, a whiskey tonight, but you know, I don't know. I just decided beer is the way tonight. By the way, anyone who's watching us on YouTube, Sydney is literally act like he's actually in the, in front of the Northern Lights as we speak. He he is yeah. recording. It's cold. <laughs> it's cold. It's cold. Got, got the <laughs> he's drinking a warm beer. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, what are you drinking, man? I'm drinking the same drink we had in a podcast interview with a, with a wine expert, Amy White. It was a really good interview. Um, so I'm drinking Taylor's Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, nice! Um, it's really good. It's uh, I should be describing them better since we chatted with her, but I need to read through the show notes myself. <laughs> yeah, Dave has learned nothing from the conversation we had with no. the wine expert. Uh, I'm I'm drinking a 51st State IPA from. So this was. Actually, a gift from one of our, our podcast guests, um, Adrian Sim from East uh, East Asia Beverages. It's really good. So he has his own uh, craft beers uh, as well, uh, Crossroads Brewing. Uh, brewery. Uh, but this is from another one that he, it's an Icelandic IPA. That's how wow. epic this is. And then so, I second that. And we're not being paid to sponsor to say this, but it is actually really good beer, Crossroads. And now I'll just say this that 51st State IP is also really good. I'm enjoying it a lot. Mm -hmm. I hope Adrian, I hope Adrian's gonna pay us anyway, uh, even though he <laughs> yeah, said he won't. So. <laughs> Come on, Adrian. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right, but it, back back to your point, Tung, I think yeah, the hardships. There's a hardship in every generation, and mm -hmm. I think um, different personalities arise and skill sets. So that that you what you're talking about is like acknowledgement and, and being prompt and communication like communication yep. is is changing 
mm-hmm. you know, with, you know, the new, like, what, what do they call the kids these days? Under 20? What do they Gen- call Generation them? Z? Generation Z, I think. Gener- yeah. 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 Gen Z, yeah. So, so that generation, you know, it's um, fast, fast, like, chatting, you know, you can just ghost people. Mm-hmm. You know, you've probably seen in relationships, people are just ghosting people now. You know, yeah. that didn't really happen back in the day. You know, and I, I, I heard this in another conversation. Um, but yeah, not to go too off track, like re- uh, communication and relationships are changing. And I think today's mm-hmm. generation, um, that's why I'm th- talking about those tools and, and those skills that will help people survive in a new digital world. Because uh, yeah, you... You can't be, you can't be, you can't, if you had a social edge, if you, if you maintain the social interactiveness, but still go digital, you need both to, to actually succeed. I, I mean, I, I'll just say one, I'll just say one thing, right, about, especially when you talk about like relationships and everything changing. Uh, I think ghosting, I, I disagree slightly because I think ghosting has always happened. It was just different and we weren't able to do it at that mass level. But I think mm. I've definitely been ghosted even when I was younger by girls who just didn't want to talk to me. So, is ghosting um, like scene zone? Is that like where they they like they they basically just don't like they just avoid conversations and gradually you just kind of just like they they disappear from your life and they just avoid you for the rest of your it's life. Like so. Ev- everyone. So basically, everyone Dave, your life. entire life, friends, <laughs> family, and like loved ones, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so it is. I mean, yeah, no, <laughs> like in Sydney, that's what you're saying. Like you know, yeah, ghosting can happen. I'm like. My life was very different then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got ghosted hard sometimes, man. Um, especially growing up. Yeah. I'm being ghosted right now by several people. I think <laughs> people leave, like people just like drop out, but I think to the speed and, and mm. the volume is much more. I, yeah. I, you know, of yeah. course I, I I've been ghosted, you know, you know, people that just don't uh, now Sydney's just trying to make anymore. us feel better. Sydney's just yeah. never been ghosted. And he's like, what uh, is no, this no, no, ghosting no, no. thing? <laughs> Like, what is rejection? Yeah. Oh, yeah. just people just give me things. I walk in the street, just give me money. What's this? <laughs> <laughs> Not, at <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Like, girls would just line up, Sydney, I love you. And you'd be like, oh, Jesus, another one. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> nah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a changing world. And I think, you know, you're going to have to be, yeah, there's some traditional traits that you characteristics that are always going to keep you in, in a good stead you know like diligence and um you know keeping the communication high and mm-hmm. um yeah, i don't know like there's heaps right yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah bad educator i completely agree with that like it, it, it's I, I don't know like there's there's a lot of people a lot of a lot of business people who say you know who, are, who definitely have strong beliefs about how how the education system should be changed. I mean, you know, I studied business management, but not like it was all theory. Not, not there was nothing like how do you deal with how do you deal with an employee who's angry with you, or how do you deal with an employee who was unruly? How do you motivate people? There was none of that. It was just just mm-hmm. strange theories based on scientific journals mm-hmm. that, that didn't they didn't really make sense. Yep. And the exams yep. were nothing about really managing people. I mean, they didn't talk about relationships. That's why I was ghosted. So how to not be ghosted? How to treat? I mean, how to treat women with respect, man? Like we, we had movies to look at, James Bond to watch. Just I don't think that's a really good teacher of of treating women with respect. And uh, yeah, so you education is definitely something um, interesting. But one thing about about the you know how I generate next generation is if you look back to like the early 1900s people were bitching about the next generation and how they're vile and corrupt, like since forever. I think we'll always be, and we'll always be uh, a bit insecure about the next generation, but yeah. And I I don't think it's, it's, we should judge like in a way that's like, uh, screw whatever they're learning. It's not going to be relevant to us, but anything new that comes, it's going to be relevant to us. It's going to affect us. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that we're hopping on that, you know, you had that chat with Tim Lee, um, a few, a few couple of podcasts mm. ago, Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, like it's, it's like almost two decades old now, but people are still catching on like, and then people, and it's becoming more prominent, you know, 
like things things that have value won't disappear they'll they'll sort of merge with what you're used to already like only fans only fans <laughs> like you first you first you're scared of it but then eventually it grows on you and then eventually like <laughs> three months later you, you you're paying 50 bucks a month to, to how many accounts hey tongue <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, okay, no, but, slope. Uh, on that line right though um uh fuck clubhouse and fuck tiktok okay just just yeah, okay, okay. Fans. yeah only fans is great man like you can't you can't you can't <laughs> shit on something that's so successful it's, but, it's but giving it, people a lifestyle like you know yeah, it's, yeah, it's, no, giving people... it's saving it's saving lives man it's saving lives that's how i yeah well it. yeah each like each generation will have their own strengths, right? I think the younger generation are just going to be more intuitive mm-hmm. with the digital technology, like technology in general. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. like I already feel like I'm falling behind, you yep. know, <laughs> and you know, it's um, with technology. There's a lot of a lot of benefits, like the speed mm-hmm. at which you get information, mm-hmm. the the depth of information you can get. Like YouTube has, you know, I've I've put like hours and I don't know, probably years into that thing yeah just like learning learning yeah. things that you that will help you because you know everyone's got time and you know you know i, I could be spending that time distracted but I'm, I'm trying to find you can find things whatever you want to to help you move forward in whatever your, your, your is pathway there, is is there anyone you're watching at the moment that you'd recommend to our listeners and viewers yeah, there's there's a few that um, really really find super valuable for me, um, and it's helped me through tough times through business, but also just like becoming more self aware and aware of other other you know dealing with relationships as you were saying, David. Like um, you know how how do you deal with an angry worker? How do you motivate them? Um, you know I think and I think um, so for for business. Patrick Bet David is one that uh, I really listen to a lot. He really sparked something in me early last year that just got me like super focused on making sure I can build the best business that I could possibly do. Like I didn't, I didn't take any time off last year, but mostly because it was hard to, right? You, you're stuck, you're stuck at home. Yeah, Patrick Bet David is he's been a good, a great inspiration in, in terms of business. Robert Green, have you read any of his stuff? Robert yep, Green, most of his stuff. Hey, you, <laughs> yeah. you're dangerous. You're dangerous. Though. Oh, Dave, Dave's lying. Dave, Dave, Dave's lying. He's never, uh, he's never seen it before. Mastery, power, seduction, laws of human nature was my, one of my favorites. Highly recommended. Yeah. We'll oh, put it in our yeah. show notes. You know, have you come across Jordan Peterson? Oh, I have. I have. I listened to a lot of his stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, that stuff, you know, um, made an impact as well. But really, you can find anything. I think we're, we live in a time where if you assess what your, your problem is, you could probably find the answer. It's yeah. just, can you be fucked to find it? Can you be fucked to, to actually put in the time, watch it, mm-hmm. digest it, implement it, and then... But yeah, that's, that's tough. It's like yeah. it's suffering. It's like, oh, shit, I'm changing, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I think it's I've, necessary. I've I've got I've got two things, man. So if like Jordan Peterson, the last one, the only one that I'm I'm aware of, to be fair. <laughs> but Jordan Peterson has really interesting uh, discussions around the concept of gender um, uh, about gender traits and how how and mm-hmm. the the value of gender traits within business and and how masculine versus feminine traits are seen in business. I I think that was a fascinating look at it because he doesn't look at it men versus women he looks at the traits as a, as a, a unisex thing and just talks about it yeah. from that perspective it's very interesting and a lot of people hate him because he doesn't conform to the standard uh you know uh like description the description and believe in all like women and stuff like that he's also a clinical psychologist so he's quite interesting yeah um yeah he, he, yeah he, he's, he's, so he's yeah he's 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 like legit knows what he's talking about when he does, does all this stuff uh, so I, I like listening to him. Uh, I think he has interesting points. The other one is I I, I think it it's the it's the it's the is the the amount I think it's called is it called choice paradox something or paradox of choice where you have just too much out there 
And I think that's the mm-hmm. case a lot, a lot of times with these like YouTube gurus or like people online. I mean, the ones you gave, uh, I'm going to assume the other two that I'm not aware of are legit. I, I, I think Jordan Peterson is quite legit, but that just came from me finding them and then using, using a people that I think I listen to podcasts I listen to and then filtering down that way. But mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of people who aren't aware, right, who are looking just to get into it, are going to be bombarded. If they, if they go on YouTube and search how to be a better business person, right, you're going to get uh, like 2 million uh, videos, like recommended, right? I mean, yeah. the, the, the paradox of choice, right? It's just so much to choose from. And you don't yeah. know what's better, what's good, what's going to work for you. I don't, I don't see there being a solution to that, purely because what wins in the long run, and Dave, uh, Dave can probably attest to this, is who markets better, right? Not who's better, but who markets mm. better. Because the platforms don't give a shit whether it's valuable or not. No offense, mm-hmm. YouTube, don't take us down. But they don't give a shit about who's right or not. They give a shit about who's better at getting more views, right? And I'm, I mean, yeah. that's why I like COVID deniers and all get a lot of views. That's why people who talk about controversial things get a lot of views. It's interesting, but yeah. are they the that's best why- person to be following though? You probably know this dude sitting. Look, there's that there's that guy with a slick back hair. I forgot he's like an Asian guy, slick back hair. He's a better marketer, but like he's got more Dan views Locke. than Dan Locke, than the CEO of Spotify. Oh, oh yeah. You, you should be you should be listening to the CEO of Spotify or or I don't know Bill Gates or whatever. But then this Dan Locke guy is just dominating YouTube, right? Yeah. I've I've never watched this stuff. Just looking. At, that's know. like that's like Ty Lopez, right? Yeah. Ty Lopez was like, like everyone thought he was showing his, his video of his garage or something with like, and books he reads and then his fancy cars yeah. and stuff. And it, he's basically just, it's all air a lot of times. He might be saying maybe three out of the five things he says is legit. Like it's just good business advice because it's quite standard. But then he's also interspersing like a lot of rubbish that he knows is going to get a lot of conversation going. Right. Yeah. Which, but bring, well, bring it back to, to Jordan Peterson. It's yeah. like, um, you know, like understanding what's well, like, speak to some, like, listen to everyone as if they have something valuable to say to you. Mm-hmm. So even all these guys that are hitting up the marketing, just because they're popular doesn't mean they're right or wrong, but mm-hmm. we need to have the, the value, the skill sets of, to have critical thinking to make our own decision. But we also need to be um, open to the fact and not afraid to take in a different perspective because I think that's what stops everyone mm, from getting a, a, a proper view of, of the truth because we get stuck in these um, echo chambers. Mm. Like you, you like, you like something on Facebook. I don't, I, I hardly use Facebook anymore, but like you can, the algorithms know what you like. So they'll just give you more what, what you like. Um, but yeah, Dan Locke, um, Ty Lopez, they, they're really good at what they do. I've learned a few things from them, but yeah, it, it sometimes, you need the right person to tell you because like your parents, our parents, you know, they're, they're going to give us advice, but, but even though it's right, it doesn't mean we're going to listen because sometimes you need a different, you need the right person to tell you as well, because yeah. you might hear the message a thousand times, but it's by the wrong person. Yes, and then it's not your loved ones. It has yeah, to be that, that good looking person you're attracted to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or Jordan Peterson. Jordan not Peterson. Not, he, he's not, a good looking. He's a good looking dude. Yeah, yeah. John Peterson's a good looking dude, man. Like he's got that. He's got yeah. that. Um, I'm a I'm a professor, but I'm also like you know, uh, un- understated understated handsome. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, no. So that that's interesting, right? Because you're right. You got to listen. I think you have to listen to everyone. You have to have critical thinking. Mm. What I fu- what I found out though, in terms of the the world, unfortunately, doesn't work like that. That's why people like Ty Lopez and Dan Locke and all are doing really well. There is no such thing as critical thinking for the majority. What they're looking at is the easy way out, right? Like what we what what you discussed that you discovered doesn't exist. The easy way to get rich, right? There isn't. Like this, that's like as much as I make fun of people like Ty Lopez and and, and Dan Locke, I, I don't actually know anything about Dan Locke, but I make fun of them. The fact that they're they're hustling, they're working really hard and they're successful, there is something you can take from that, very honestly. Like, do I, do I agree with what they do? Probably not. I don't know enough to say yes or no, but the fact they're successful means they worked hard at something. They really did. They were smart. They thought about something. They, they used, they were able to convince enough people that they were smart and that's really successful, right? I'll give them that. 
but yeah. I mean, well, yeah, Ty Lopez. Um, one thing that I do remember learning from him was, you know, finding the right direction. Um, you know, it's, you know, if, if you wanted to go from the South Pole to the North Pole, you know, if you don't have a compass, you could just be going around the world a few times, but you didn't take the fastest way there, but you've spent all this energy. Mm. So it's like, but also having the energy to get from point A to point B. So it's like, not only do you need to have the right direction, you need to have the effort to keep pushing through the obstacles. Um, and the way he said it is so much better than what I just said right now. So, so just delete this part of the, the, the podcast. No, no, no. This is, this is verbatim <laughs> what Ty Lopez said. We're just going to keep it in and tag yeah, Ty Lopez yeah, yeah, for sure. in this part specifically. Yeah. But no, yeah. I think what Ty Lopez has done is, is pretty smart because there's so many people who, who've advertised courses, but none have stuck out. I mean, there have but his, during his time, there he was the one who stuck out. That's why we're talking about him right now. We're talking about the garage video. So there's some kind of genius or some kind of magic to what he did um, with that garage video because it, most people know about it. Anyway, back to back back to pop tax man. Like you're saying that you know you had your lows and then your highs. Do you mind sharing some of your lows and how you overcame them? Yeah, 2020, <clears throat> a lot of time was spent just head down, focused on sales, working on partnerships, you know, getting as much rev through the door so we can grow the business. Um, and because I was so focused on the business, a lot of relationships suffered, you know? Like, I, you know, I don't talk to a lot of, like a lot of friends that I used to talk to a lot, a few of them dropped out, you know? It's not that we we didn't become friends. It's just we don't catch up as much anymore. Um, relationships with you know family, you know, got strained because you know you're so you're so focused in the business and you get short with people. You stop listening because you're just like going down this pathway with you know um, at a, a thousand miles per hour. Um, staff, of course, I said, um, you know, they they were like are they paying attention? Like does management really care about the future and the, and my progression? So 2020 was because I was so focused on making sure that we could make it through to the end of the year. Um, relationships were the collateral. Um, and then through December, like a lot of this feedback came through, you know, I started to, to see how people were um, reacting to me and it's not, it's not a way, that I was, you know, happy. So I, I realized I had to make it make a proper change in that direction. So again, finding finding solutions, finding solutions on YouTube. Like I don't have a mentor. I wish I did. I wish <laughs> I had a mentor, but you know, YouTube is my mentor. <laughs> but I just have to make sure that I find the right, the right solution. But yeah, the, the past few months I've really focused on people. Yeah. Like I want to listen to what you guys are saying and, and be active and, and understand like where you're coming from, like what you're trying to do and, and mm -hmm. be, be present with you. And um, taking that kind of with me has helped repair some relationships and improve them. So I just want to keep going down that. Um, so that's, that's what's happened with pop like the past year. And yeah, we're, we're, we're looking really strong. Like the team is energized. Um, we're looking to double this year. So last year we, we started the year with five or six people and then we ended 2020 with 16. Oh, nice, so, man. You know, That's it's, good. That's really good growth. So Sydney is now woke. You are now, you've transcended beyond <laughs> to the standard businessman to someone who, who's there in the moment. Nice one, man. <laughs> Yeah. I Sydney, don't know. It's Sydney is woke. <laughs> you're woke. That's <laughs> he is. He is. Like because like to a lot of people, understanding their employees isn't a low in the business. Like it is it is sort of a low, but it's not something that's essentially something to be worried. Uh, yeah, people, worried people about. wouldn't so lose sleep. People wouldn't lose sleep over it like you did, Sydney. So I think that's actually a really good thing. So you you were essentially woke. Nice. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Well, 
Yeah, well, you know, you know how like these big companies have grown their business by creating a culture. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and Amazon's got like the fourteen principles, and um, you know, one of ours, one of our values is building amazing relationships, because you know people don't leave. And I think I, I heard this from. Um, I hear this from. I don't know. Damn Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Ty Lopez. Well, pe pe people don't leave businesses because of um, like, not always because of like a better opportunity or, mm -hmm. um, or because of the job shit. Um, it, it usually comes from like the people you work with. Yeah, it's bad. It's like, I can't, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't stand that guy. Like yeah. I can't stand that person. Like why, yeah. why, you know, it's, so managing that culture, not letting um, a negative behavior mm -hmm. like become toxic within the workplaces is what managers should be, well, I think, focusing on yeah. as well. I mean, yeah. I mean it, it, yeah, sorry, Dave, go ahead, man. Yeah, sorry, man, go, go for it. No, uh, I mean, I, I, had, I had one point there, which was, I think we need to step away from the term management a little bit because you're not trying to like managing people implies that you you need to control them in some way. Where I think you, you're at your position, Sydney, you're you're leading people, though, right? You're showing them the path, the right thing. You're showing them by example, and that's kind of what I try to tell my team as well. Like I'm not managing you; I'm showing you what to do. You're managing yourself, right? Yeah. Because I, I trust that you can do it. You just don't know what to do yet. And it's my role to tell you what to do. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, I, I face the exact same issues you, you did, honestly. Uh, not not to not to like kind of jump on your, your on your prey, but it was. We, we all have the set. We all have similar experiences, so it's yeah. good to to you jump on, like you know, tell me, tell me what's happening. <laughs> jump on him, Tag. Oh, all right, man. <laughs> but like, I'll go fly down though, so it's gonna be a bit weird. Um, uh, no. So the interesting thing is, right when I was. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at some of the stuff because I, I sent a few things to my team as well in terms of messages and everything uh, a little while ago, which was I wanted them to understand that, you know, while because they haven't a lot of times what they were the, some of the feedback I was getting is like they don't see me uh, a lot or like I'm not really that responsive because I speak very responsive to everything, try to deal with issues. But that's because I've been working like just just a lot trying to get trying to make sure that we get everything the business bounces back after COVID, right? And it's been going really well, but it's all about keeping the momentum. That's what I believe at least. So um, what yeah. I've taken a step back and try to do a little bit like you is, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start getting more, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sacrifice a little bit of growth, not a lot, but a little bit of growth and put that time into making sure that uh, my team understands that they're still valued in everything that they do. So it's small things like, things that I'm, I'm borrowing from other people, things that I'm borrowing from other companies, which I never used to do. Cause I was like, fuck you, you don't, you run I hate the way you run your company, but I'm like, okay, their employees seem to be more happy. Like let's, let's try and borrow something from them. And so I was like, yeah, just really simple things. It's just more communication. It's just more making sure that they're happier because everyone works remotely anyway. So it's about, you know, face as much FaceTime with me without being intrusive, without saying, Hey, what are you doing today? Hey, get on yeah. video call. I want to see your face. That would just be creepy, man. Yeah, that's what Tung tells me every morning. Where's my good morning video Zoom call? <laughs> well, I can't you didn't greet to me see... good morning today. <laughs> David, why didn't you greet me good morning today? Dave, Sad it's been the third so, so needy. <laughs> so needy. When, when we catch up, like, you know, if, if, we, if I make it to number three on, on, your, on business over drinks, then um, I'd love to see you what it looks like in, in 12 months. Like this is like a snapshot, like, you know, a time capsule where we could say, look, this is some principles we put in place and, you know, look, look what the results are. And that's why I think, you know, I wanted to catch up with you guys today and just sort of share some, some ideas that could, you know, maybe someone listening to this will say, okay, that clicks with me. So it's the time and the person saying it. So maybe, you know, it'd be awesome if, if what we're talking about today inspired someone to be like yeah you know oh, yeah man. these are some changes Thanks, that i can make but by the way what, what sydney's referring to is that our interview with him if you listen go back to our show notes i think it's episode four he, our interview with him was the third most popular podcast episode we've had so well done that's why we have sydney back 
because the first two people who had the most popular part, they, they won't come back. They're like, there's no thanks, man. We did. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, we no. Are, we asked them, you want to come back? No. <laughs> They're like, fuck. Uh, <laughs> uh no man like no it's really cool it's always good it's always good to have you back sydney i i, I don't think we're done sydney unless you gotta run all right so sydney like you've shared quite a lot of really interesting stuff uh with us especially around things that you've learned but i was thinking maybe it'd be easier for our listeners if you could actually give them like the top three things you took away from all the content and all the people you've been listening to and watching videos you've been watching that they can you can kind of distill it for them like these are the three things i i, I took away from uh in the last few months yeah um well just understanding like everyone's current state is is going to be unique um i don't know if i could give you the right the right thing that would help you right now but um i think three things that i've taken notice of lately is uh the duality of of life um because you'll you'll notice that you know it's always you've got a balance between um light and dark hot and cold fast and slow, um, being too nice or being too aggressive, you know, like all these interactions on a, on a moment by moment basis is gonna be a balance between those two opposing forces. So I found that pretty interesting for me because like for the business, you know, for me to say like, I wanna, I wanna build like a billion dollar business. And then for me to be like, but I need to do steps one, two, three, and I need to take it slow. So like, although I wanted to do it fast, I've actually got to do a lot of things slow. And it um, reminds me of that army saying that um, slow is smooth, smooth is fast kind of thing. So it's, it's understanding the paradox, like similar to what you were saying, Tung, um, the paradox of choice, like having too much choice, but being like understanding enough to make the right choice. So mm -hmm. that critical thinking yep. um, is important. Um, so that, I'd say that's one, like understanding duality and, and balance, like balance goes back to yin and yang. Um, so I think balance is super important. Um, I think for those that don't have a direction, you know, I think what's helped me a lot was finding that direction. Mm -hmm. um, because similar to what we we're talking about, Dan Locke and and um, Ty Lopez, they knew what they were good at. Yeah. Um, but you you you, you damn you got to be damn sure that they tried a few things. So you know, look for inspiration. Um, you know, you know, you can find it in all types of fields. You can find it in um, in music, in art, in business, in life. Mm -hmm. um, a writer, you know. Um, so yeah, the, the more you, you open yourself to finding, finding your, your purpose or your direction, you will find it. So you don't give up on that. Um, and yeah, not taking things too seriously, I suppose. And that's a paradox in itself too. Like you gotta be serious about your career and your job, but you're also going to be not too serious. It's, it's, it's weird. Um. I mean, that's where critical thinking comes into play, right? You got to find that balance as well, like figure out what's your limit, you know? How serious are you going to get? Yeah, that's yeah. fair, man. That's fair. That's, I think those are really good. Those are three really interesting takeaways. Man. I have a question about the first takeaway. So when you have, when you are understanding the dichotomy of life and, and yin and yangs, what, what do you do with that knowledge? Each moment you're making a decision. Like Patrick Bet David, who's that business person that I follow, it's like, it's all about odds. You know, life is about odds, like with your relationships, like say uh, you guys, are, you guys, um, you, Dave, is that a fiance you have now? Yep. Congratulations. So that's, oh, thank you. That's a bet. That's a bet you've made. You know, it's like, I yeah. bet that she's going to be good long-term. So it's, Oh, she's taking a much higher risk. Than yeah, is, I was man. about she's to say that. she's taking a much huge higher risk. risk. Yeah. Huge risk. <laughs> it's a massive yeah, risk, man. Yeah. Good. Good luck to her. <laughs> good luck to her, indeed. Good luck to her, indeed. That, that'll be my wedding speech. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, decision making, like yeah. having enough experiences to make the right decision, I think it, it's it's key. And and that only comes from making the wrong decisions too. But like one of another um a value that we have at the business is 
to embrace change because you know it, it's inevitable that change will happen so the more you be get become comfortable with it the more versatile you become the more adaptable you become and more likely to make the right decision so i think open yourself up to new experiences is, is key as well um, oh yeah for sure but yeah i agree yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's the top three guys. You know, that's that's it. I'm out. I'm spent. <laughs> yeah, we, we we always like to hear that from all our guests. Is like I can't can't do it anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know the future. I think like painting a painting a future for yourselves is is going to be important as well. Like right now, I'm just as I said, I, I've got a keen interest in in philosophy and and understanding what makes businesses and and life more enjoyable and, and, and successful. So, you know, Dave, like I've, I've always been inspired by that. You've ha you've got a book and you know, you, you, you're, you're creating, you're, you're a creator, you're an artist. And, you know, that's something that I want to do in the future as well. So it's like, you know, try new things and, and don't be afraid to, to do it is, um, well, by the way, before we end the podcast, Sydney is offering a free 30 minute consultation to, to anyone who inquires through us and mentions our podcast. So if you're an established business, um, feel free to hit us up or hit Sydney up and mention this podcast. And you'll get a free chat with him. He's obviously woke. He knows what he's talking about and his business is legit. Like they, they do great stuff for their clients. So don't hesitate. So the business is pop tart, pop tax. And <laughs> we'll put the we'll put the website on what she Did called it, say that you called, the first pop, one? you called it pop tart, tart man. No, I said I said pop tux. Like I, I, it, was a, it was a slip of the tongue. Pop tax. So there's pop yeah. tax. Check out our show notes and we'll go to the tongue's laughing. <clears throat> Sorry, yeah. No, my, my you, bad. You know, um, the last time Tongue laughed at me was really bad. It was uh, when I was in Singapore, right? And we were with a big group of friends. And then he remembered how I was dumped on Christmas. And oh. then he he told everyone this. He told everyone I was dumped on Christmas twice and he couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> he was so awkward. I did. I he, did. That was the best really thing. bad person. Yeah, that's the that's best Bad person, thing. man. I loved it. You he loved made, it. I didn't love it. I didn't enjoy those moments. <laughs> I should have. I should have had been to one of Sydney's schools. Like if if, if you had a school uh, to talk about relationships, I wouldn't have been dumped at Christmas. Maybe not. Maybe I would have. <laughs> no, you would have, man. That's you, why you guys work together, man. Oh, Sydney, he got dumped on Christmas twice. Not once, uh, twice, uh, twice, man. Separate Christmas people? Eve, Christmas Eve. All right. <laughs> he got dumped people? during the Christmas period twice. Not Wait, once, twice. <laughs> Sorry, separate Dave, people. but like you, you just made it seem like I made brought made up some bullshit, mate. Twice. No, you did. They made it all. <laughs> Sorry, uh, was that different people as well? Yeah, yeah. Dave, Dave's disappointed many women in his life. A couple of guys too. Actually, that's why we need that school, Sydney. <laughs> that's why we need yeah. that school. Yeah, yeah. Cool, guys. Well, thanks, thanks again for having me. Um, yeah. I'd love to catch up with you guys in in uh in the future again and. See how we're all tracking. Yeah, man. 2022. Exactly. 2022. If, if anyone wants company. to, if anyone wants to follow you or get in touch, uh, where, where's the best place they should go? LinkedIn. They can they can find me on LinkedIn, Sydney Catchwell, and right. uh, so, Sydney S I Sydney, and uh, we'll put him in the show notes anyway, so you guys can quickly click on it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We'll tag you and everything, night. Sydney. Thanks, man. Thanks for thanks for joining us, dude. Appreciate it. Catch Thank up you. with you soon. And uh, thanks everyone once again for listening to our podcast. We love you very much. We really appreciate all the good feedback you've been giving us as well as your love and support. So if you can follow us on Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever is most convenient for you and just look for business over drinks and comment and like us. It goes a long way. We, we, it helps us keep bringing great guests like Sydney. So thank you very much. See you guys. Oh, 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 oh,